I spent the past few days working on this cabinet. I drilled the holes for the adjustable shelves, gave the whole cabinet a light sanding, making sure to soften the edges, any sharp edges. And then I finished the cabinet with two coats of water-based polyurethane sanding in between coats. And I think water-based polyurethane is just really easy to use. I apply it with a foam roller and then brush in the direction of the grain with a foam brush. Today I'm going to focus on the drawers and I'll get started by ripping the material for the drawer fronts, sides, and backs. After I cut the drawer fronts and sides to length and width, I replaced the blade on the table saw with a stacked dado, only using the two ends of the stacked dado, which create a width just a little bit less than a quarter of an inch, and that's gonna be perfect for the plywood that I'm using for the drawer bottoms. But before I cut the groove for the drawer bottoms, I'll use this same blade setup to cut a rabbit in all of the drawer fronts. I was getting a little tear out on the test piece, so I'm using a marking gauge to score the plywood before I run it through the saw, and that will help prevent the tear out. I finished cutting the rabbit joint in all of the drawer fronts. Next, I'll lower the blade a little bit and cut a groove in the drawer fronts and the drawer sides to accept the drawer bottom. Now I'm gonna cut a dado at the back of the drawer. This is for the drawer back. And I'll start by cutting a quarter inch groove in a test piece, and I'll cut that same quarter inch groove at the back of all of the sides. I'm using three quarter inch plywood for the drawer backs, and I'll mark a line here and then I'll slowly move the fence over and sneak up on that line. Once I've got a nice tight fit on the test piece, basically this is your important cut, you'll be left with this, then I'll make this cut on all of the drawer sides and once this cut is done, then I'll plow out this middle piece. And that looks nice and snug, so next I'll make the dado cut on all of the sides. Now I'm ready to rip the back of the drawer to width, and to get that measurement I'll pull from the top of the drawer to where the groove starts, and you can see it's two and a half inches. To find the length of the drawer back, I'll measure the inside of the drawer front and add a half of an inch because the depth of the dado is exactly a quarter of an inch on each of the drawer sides. To 
find the dimensions of the bottom of the drawer, I'll take a measurement of the back of the drawer and subtract a sixteenth of an inch so the bottom isn't too tight. Then I'll take a measurement from the inside of the drawer, hitting the tape on the inside of the front of the drawer all the way to the back. And in this case, it's 13 and a quarter, and that's the measurement. To build the drawers, I'm using wood glue and 18 gauge inch and a quarter nails. For the drawer bottoms, I'm changing the nails from inch and a quarter to three quarters of an inch. I'll add a little glue in the groove in the front of the drawer and then slide in the drawer bottom. Then I'll draw a line from the center of the dado using this, I call it a straight line pencil trick where I'm using my fingernail as a guide to just draw a straight line. Then I'll attach the bottom of the drawer to the drawer back with a few nails. Once the drawer is put together, I'll use a few clamps to tighten up the joints. And I'm using a wet rag to remove any of the glue squeeze out before it sets up. I'm using this piece of cherry casing to create the door and drawer pulls. The casing was removed during the sunroom renovation project and the casing has what's known as a back out. This is to help get a tighter fit against the jam and the wall, basically avoiding any imperfections in the sheetrock with the back out. But for the door and drawer pulls, the back out will act like a finger pull. So to make the door and drawer pulls, I'll simply rip the casing at 7 eighths of an inch. After I unclamp the drawers, I add a bead of hot glue to the bottom and the back for a little extra strength. I just finished putting a coat of polyurethane on all of the drawers and while that's drying, I'll get to work on putting the door pulls on the doors and to make it a little bit easier I've made a jig and this will clamp to the door flush with the top and the side and I'll drill the holes and you can see I've got a note here it says top with an arrow that's pointing towards the inside of the door or the seam so I'll drill the holes on the left door then I'll flip the jig over and drill the holes on the right. Now I'm attaching the drawer pulls to the drawer fronts and to make that a little bit easier I've made another jig. This is a piece of half inch MDF and I used the drill press to drill holes in it. It's the same width and length as the drawer front and I'll clamp the jig in place and drill through the holes. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm really happy to have this new addition to the shop. It's something I should have done a long time ago. Uh, it's not quite finished yet. I still need to come up with a way to stop the drawers or drawer stop. I'm going to work on it over the weekend. And then uh, maybe next week I'll do a short Q&A video. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I'll answer those questions and I'll show you what I came up with for a drawer stop. I do want to thank Garnica Plywood for sponsoring this build. This plywood's an absolute pleasure to work with, and I'm sure you notice the, how uniform the core is when I'm making cuts with the, the miter saw or, or on the table saw. It's just, it really is just nice to build something with this plywood. So if you want to know more about Garnica plywood, I'll have a link to a short video that shows their whole process, how the plywood is produced. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon.